One of unexpected discoveries coming from spider mite genome, the first chelicerate genome sequenced, was actually spider mite silk. When we conceived this project, our idea was to develop tools to control this important worldwide pest, but we didn't even dream that we are going to actually discover potential bio nanomaterial coming from the spider mite silk. This work represents really nice multidisciplinary collaboration between physics department led by Jeff Hutter and our biology team focusing on mechanical properties of the spider mite cell. Mike came to me with a material that he wanted to characterize, a natural nanofiber, which sounded interesting because I had the techniques and the equipment to do this sort of thing. It turned out that our, our models that we normally use weren't quite adequate, so we had to develop a new theory, and that's where it became interesting from a physics point of view. So basically, the way the measurements are done is that you take a fiber that you're trying to measure, you anchor it at both ends, you suspend it, and then you come along with the atomic force microscope and you push on it to bend it, like that. The difference is that our tip is only a few nanometers across, the fiber is about a thousand times thinner than your hair, but that's the basic idea. So by measuring the force you apply and how much it bends, you can work out the properties. What I find interesting about the material is that it's a true natural nanomaterial. For instance, spider silk, which people often talk about, has similar properties, not quite as high a Young's modulus, a little tougher, but it's way bigger. It has a much thicker diameter. This is uh, a thousand times thinner than your hair, and uh, one can imagine a lot of applications where this could be put to use. Potential application of spider mite silk are broad. Right now, it's just wish list what it can be used for, and of course requires additional research. But if this material is biocompatible, it can be used as scaffold for cell growth, tissue regeneration, and tissue transplantation. It can be used for sutures, for wounds. It can be used for, as hydrogel for wooden treatment. And also it can be used for production of artificial bones or artificial veins and even heart valves.